What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna have some fun in this one. We're gonna be restoring these pipes back to brand new. I'm gonna give you guys a little secret during the video on how to get them more of a works look. So make sure you guys stay tuned. As you see here on my workbench, I have one, two, three, four, five, six pipes. Five of them are pro circuit pipes. We've got a combination of works and two platinum pipes here. There's a lot of work here to be done in these pipes, guys. And after I'm done refurbing them, they're all gonna be for sale. I've already got a line of people wanting these pipes already, but if they don't come through, make sure you let me know which one you might be interested in. So this one here is a pro circuit PK99250. Works pipe for a 1999 KX250. Specifically, will fit 02 to 99. Then the next one here is a PK98 250P. So a Pro Circuit Platinum pipe for a 1998 KX250 specifically. And then the next one is a PY0250P. So a Pro Circuit Platinum pipe for me for a Yamaha YZ250. That's going to fit 0. 2000 to 2001. This next one here is a coveted prize, PK05250. So Pro Circuit K stands for Kawasaki. I should have explained that earlier. The Y stands for the Yamaha, but this is 05 to 07 KX250. And then these last two here, let's see here, we have a PS04250. So Pro Circuit Suzuki pipe for an 04 plus RM250. And this is actually a stock OEM RM250 pipe that I had for my throwback two stroke garage build shootout. But we've got some dents to work out. We've got some rust to take out. So there's a huge dent here on the Suzuki pipe. The Pro Circuit, the 05 to 07 KX250 pipe is pretty much just rusted up. Gonna refurb that, make it look brand new. And the platinum pipes, we're gonna be stripping the platinum from the pipes here um, with Prime MX wheels and a wire wheel. We got some dents to get out of there too. And then this 99 Works Pro Circuit pipe for the KX250 is probably the most beat up here. And we've got a dent removal kit from eBay that we're gonna use. But in terms of dent removal, guys, I've already done a video on a how to, a complete step-by-step -step how to on removing dents using this dent repair kit from eBay. I did it on an 04 CR250, again, for my throwback two-stroke garage build shootout because I wanted to save some money instead of buying a brand new pipe. The kit's about, I don't know, 100 to 120, I would say. I'll leave the link in my description below. But if you have one of these coveted pro circuit pipes and your pipe has a dent in it and you don't have the money, one, or two, it's so hard to find these pro circuit pipes nowadays, the dent removal kit is the way to go. So I'm gonna be doing the dent removal kit on all these pipes here today, the ones that need it, and then I'm gonna be refurbing them with Prime MX wheels and a wire wheel to get these things looking brand new as well as bluing over the welds again. So I'm gonna start with what I think is the most difficult here, the most dense is the Pro Circuit 1999 KX250 pipe, and then I'm gonna move over to the 1998 Platinum Pro Circuit pipe. I've never removed the platinum plating from a pipe before so we're gonna see how that goes with the combination again of the prime pads and the wire wheel before we get started though a little background about this pipe repair kit there may be some fuel oil carbon residue built up in the pipe if you just took the pipe off your bike combine that with about 60 psi of air pressure of what you're gonna put into that pipe and a torch, you pretty much created a mini bomb, so to speak. I've never seen it happen to me. There's been videos of pipes exploding on people. I don't know how ca catastrophic that is, but the most important thing you could probably do is take some Dawn dish soap, put some dish soap into the pipe, spray it out with the hose, make sure it's all nice and clean on the inside. Try to get as much of that gas, fuel, oil, carbon out of the pipe as you can before you go ahead and hook this system up. I thought about using some Simple Green to do so. Simple Green is non-flammable, however, I don't know about the toxic chemicals you're gonna be breathing in once if you don't completely rinse the pipe out fully. I'm gonna be wearing a respirator anyway when I'm doing this because you will get the carbon fumes from the pipe repair kit. So. Either or, choose your pick, pick your battles, but I am going to use the Dawn dish soap like you see here. Back in from washing those pipes, had to have a little fun with it. It was raining out here, so got a little soapy and sudsy with the pipes. But anyways, this is the kit, guys, from eBay. So the kit has two ends. This is a smaller kit. It's made for a 125cc to 300. So this is the valve end, and there's a piece of rubber here that you're going to put on the back of the valve. So you go, that backing piece goes on like that. And then you've got the rubber and then the valve piece, which is gonna to go to the end of the pipe. And then you've got these two long bolts. They're gonna come through. And that is what 
This bolt here is what tightens down the valve piece to the pipe. Just gonna make sure it's nice and snug. You just want it tight enough so it doesn't leak air and we're gonna check the air once the other side is on. So the other side, kind of the same thing, but this side has the gauge. You can see it goes from zero to 100 PSI. The recommended working point is around 60 PSI. I don't really mess with it. I think I've gone up to 80, but I've heard people going up to 120. I'm not trying to risk this thing exploding in my face. Some people say it's safe, some people say it's not, I don't know, but I've normally stick, stuck around the 60 to 80 PSI range depending on how hard the dent is to come out. Usually you just need a little bit more heat at the lower PSIs. Same thing, you got this rubber plate that is gonna go on the back of the gauge here. I like to work with the gauge facing up. <laughs> kind of makes sense so you can actually see what you're doing. So the contraption here is gonna be a little bit loosey-goosey, obviously, until you get everything tightened on. Just kind of work with it, play with it, and uh, you'll get it. There we go, contraption is all set up to the pipe now. So what we need to do is fill the valve up here to 30 PSI. We're gonna make sure there's no air leaks on this side and or on this side. Any air leaks? Don't hear any, not on that side. What about this side? Nope, not on that side either. I feel like you'd hear them pretty clearly, but um, I just wanna put my ear down there just in case, you know, especially if it blows up, that I don't hear anything. But before we go any further, I'm gonna check the accuracy of the gauge here on this system. So you probably can't see that, but that says 30 PSI right on the dot. I got a digital pressure gauge that I use pretty often and a, one, and a more mechanical one. So let's check the mechanical one first. That's reading a little bit over 25 PSI, so maybe like 27-ish. Now let's check the digital one. And this as well is reading at 26 and a half. So while the gauge on the system is reading about 30, you know that this is gonna be slightly about four PSI higher than what it actually is. Probably not a bad thing that it's reading a little bit higher, but just keep that in mind when you're doing it. So the dents we need to get out of this pipe here are obviously this big one here. And then moving down underneath the badge, we just got a bunch of, this is gonna be hard because this seems to be right on where that weld is. So this actually isn't a crack, just a little gouge. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, kind of eight underneath. And then when I flip the pipe over, got nine, 10 there on the bottom. A Couple small ones right there. And I'm coming around the other side of the neck. This one right here. And that's really it on that side. And then, oh, maybe just a little bit here. So this pipe, we got our work cut out for us with this pipe right here. All right, well, now that the dent removal system is on the pipe now, all you need to do is heat up all the dents on the pipe. So I got this yellow map gas torch here. You can get it at, I don't know, Walmart, Advanced Auto, your local hardware store. This is gonna be one of your best, not the best, but better than the blue uh, propane torches because the map gas is gonna burn a little bit hotter. So I got that to work out these dents. And then also, call me crazy, I don't care what you guys think, but gotta throw on my chest protector because just in case if something actually does happen, I don't really care about my arms or whatever, but I don't want a piece of metal flying or trying to get through my chest. So here we are, I got the chest protector. At least I got a layer of protection. And then I've got some safety glasses here and uh, my respirator and we should be good to go. So I'm gonna start with this dent here first and I'm gonna leave the pressure inside the pipe at 30 PSI right now. I'm gonna heat it up a little bit and see how the pipe is taking to the heat plus the pressure, making sure there's no leaks at either end of them. And then I'm gonna start slowly increasing it up, the pressure up to that 60 PSI. You'll notice as you start heating it up that the pressure will start to increase inside the pipe as well. So just be careful, be aware, and watch the gauge as you start to heat it up so it doesn't go over a PSI. PSI that you're gonna be uncomfortable with. So since it can be quite a long process here, I gotta give you guys a little time lapse, but you basically wanna start with the outside of the dent and work your way towards the center. You wanna get that thing pretty red hot because that's when the dent is gonna come out the easiest 
And I've also heard from a couple other guys that you can actually take a Smallville hammer and tap on that dent to help get it out as well if you guys are having issues. All right, so I've been working on that top dent for maybe about, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes or so. I did pretty quickly jump up the gauge to about 50 PSI. And then from me heating it up the past 10 minutes, it did bump up to 60 PSI. I'm tempted to even pump it up a little bit more, up to 70, just because that last little bit of that dent is just so hard to get out. You can still see just a little bit right there, but if I kind of bring the camera to the side a little bit, it's tough to see that way. You still do see it head on there, but the closer you get to getting that dent out, the more heat and pressure you need just to, just to finish it off. So I'm gonna bump this thing up to 70 and throw some more heat on it and see if we can't get it out. I would say that's about 98, 99% out. Pretty pumped with how that worked. Bumping it up to 70 worked great, applying a little bit more heat. There still seems to be like a little bit of a something right there that I might go back and uh, touch up later. But first off, uh, for that first dent, I am happy with how that came out. But on to this next one. So this two dent chunk here is gonna be pretty difficult. One, because it's on the weld here, and this is a pretty steep dent. As you can see, it's not gradual like this one here. This one won't be a problem, but I'm so curious about how this thing is gonna come out. Hate to admit it guys, but I went ahead and done fudged up. That's right, I said the word fudge. I fudged up. Got a little greedy with what I was doing over here and I uh, just made a mistake. So this is the mistake I made. Let me flip the camera around for you guys. Uh, so I was going ham right here on this spot of the pipe, which is right over the weld. There was, this is the spot where the dent was pretty steep on both sides and I was just getting too greedy with trying to make sure I could get another percentage point out of it. And it's actually not this little slash right here, but if you can see here, I actually heated the pipe up way too much, got it way too red hot on this weld, and the pipe actually kind of cracked and split a little bit right there. It's not the end of the world, but I was bumming pretty hard. Sucks to admit that I made a mistake like that on camera, but we'll take it as a learning experience. So there's a couple ways that you could fix it. One, you could just weld over that crack. And to go with that, number one, I'm not a welder. I have zero experience with welding, so I can't, take it to, can't get it welded myself. You could take it to go get welded, but I'm cheap and I don't wanna spend any more money. So I was thinking, what else could possibly fix this thing? And I thought, JB Weld. So let's head over to the, where did I put it? Is it in here? Nope, not in there. The toolbox here. And I got a little set of JB Weld. So we're gonna get some JB Weld on this little crack. Luckily, it's not the biggest crack in the world and I think JB Weld is gonna work great. You might think it's a jerry-rig type of thing to do. Kinda is, but I think it's gonna work. I mean, I guess when you see used dirt bikes that have JB Weld on the cases, you kinda get a little bit sketched out, but I mean, those guys are in a pinch where they might not be able to find a case and the JB Weld actually works really well. But I did a little bit of research for you guys before going ahead and doing this. JB Weld can withstand heats up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't know what that translates to degrees Celsius. They also have a JB Weld Extreme Heat that I saw on the website. That can handle up to continuous heat of 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. 537 degrees Celsius. Celsius, I did that calculation in my head there. So talking about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, that's probably about 215 degrees Celsius. Celsius guys, check my math on that. To my knowledge, these pipes don't reach 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And with that little crack and the JB Weld, I think we're gonna be fine. <laughs> oh yeah, forgot to mention, I let the pipe cool down outside for a couple hours. You don't wanna to be touching a blazing hot pipe because the thing was fire engine red hot. So I let it cool down and that's why I am able to touch it now. But uh, went, again, went ahead and grabbed a dirty Q-tip from the bathroom and let's mix up this JB Weld. Throw a little black on there. We don't really need that much, which is good since it's just a little 
So this is the, the steel, they call it. This is the hardener. Just kind of makes it 50-50. And we're gonna take the dirty Q-tip. It's not really dirty, guys. Chill out. We're gonna mix it up. And it should be, it should turn into a gray substance if you guys uh, took art class back in the day. White and black make gray. Time to throw this on the pipe. Get it nice and rubbed in there. Now this does take about four to six hours to cure. Kind of making sure I press it into that crack there. I think once that gets cured on there, you can go ahead and uh, get that buffed out and it'll be just fine. Okay. Well, we let the JB well dry on that one. We're going to go ahead and grab this platinum for the 98KX250. So, I mean, looking at it, it's really not in bad shape in terms of dents go. I don't know if you guys can see right on the front there, right below the badge. It's just ever so slightly dented in not too crazy though i'm gonna throw a little bit of heat on it you can kind of see it's flattened out there that shouldn't be too bad again it's on the weld so now i know to be super careful i knew before but i was getting greedy like i said um, it's all there's some surface rust because the plating has actually come off it a little bit this part of my index finger here is the plating and you can see these streaks here where the plating has actually come off. And any spot where you see rust, the plating has already actually come off the thing already. So we're just gonna take the prime pads when we need to, but in terms of dents on the inside, everything is looking good. This mount just needs to be straightened back up. But there are two dents right there in the curve, another dent there on the inside, and then there was just, where is it? There's a little tiny dent right there. So these dents should be pretty easy to get out. And then we need to strip the plating off of this with some prime wheels and a wire wheel. Overall, pretty happy with the way this one turned out. Didn't spend too much time on this little flat dent here. I didn't want to really put a lot of heat on that weld spot, but it's really so minor that you can't even tell the difference. And around the bend where the pipe comes together in those three spots, still a little bit of a dent right there, but again, I didn't want to apply too much heat to that spot because the pieces of the pipe are coming together in three spots, but I mean, there's a little slight dent, but I mean, I don't think we're gonna notice that too much, but overall, pretty pumped with the way this one turned out. So coming back to the 99 works pipe that I left outside overnight in the rain, kind of started to rust a little bit, but as you see here, the freaking JB Weld is rock hard on there. Um, we'll be able to get the wire wheel and prime pads on there, but I'm really confident that the JB Weld was able to seal up that crack. I mean, this thing, it's rock hard guys. So what I did was I just finished up the remainder of the dents around the curve of the pipe and this thing actually came out really well for being what in my opinion was the worst pipe of the bunch. Talking about having a little fun eh? So just finished up with the 04 to 08 RM250 pipe as well as the 05 to 07 KX250 Pro Circuit Works pipes. As you see with the RM250, it wasn't a bad deal at all, neither with the KX. These big bubble type dents are super easy to come out. Just kind of start on the outside and work your way in. I was running the um, system at 60 to 70 PSI. Didn't really need to run them too high to get those dents out. As you can see here with the Kawasaki, it was a little bit more difficult on the bottom just because it was on that um, weld line, but no big deal. But uh, yeah, what we got left is this, the OEM RM250 pipe, bunch of surface rust on this thing. I did when I had my vapor blaster, throw that in the vapor blaster to see how it would work. We got a few dents to get along the bottom here, like this one, where, a couple small ones right there. And then on the inside right there, another one on the inside right there. I think that's pretty much it, but this OEM pipe is in great condition. A couple on the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and tackle that right now.
Also, not sure when I'm gonna learn just to work on one thing at a time and not try to work on four bikes at a time, not try to work on six pipes at a time. <laughs> Everything just takes so much longer. And the last one on the docket, guys, is this 2000-2001 YZ250 Platinum Pipe. It's actually a little bit in worse condition as far as the dents go, as I thought. So we got one right there above the badge, one below. The badge just kind of nicked itself right there. And as we move around to the bottom here, those won't be too bad to get out. Not too concerned. There's another one. Then on the inside, there's a couple. And then we got a good dent right there. That one's kind of tight and pretty steep. So I'm gonna give this a shot and keep you guys posted on how it goes. Ready to go, dents are out. Now the fun part is getting them nice and pretty. So let's get them in the garage and let's go through that process. Okay, so we got an assortment of things to use here to get these things looking pretty. I got my magic buffing wheel here. So the secret here to getting these pipes all cleaned up is first using one of these wire wheels and then we've got the assortment of prime wheels here. And the wire wheels actually help a bunch to remove the old weld marks here on these pipes. This pipe doesn't have it actually too much, but if I go over to the RM250 pipe, these weld marks here on this works pipe that's in better condition are what I'm talking about. The wire wheel just works way better and leaves more of a dull finish. We will end up using the, um, the fine wheel, but we're gonna go through the process right now. So the bench buffer is gonna be our best friend for the larger areas of the pipe here, but what do we do about the little loop de do part here where you can't get the big wheels into the smaller spots. Well, thanks to Prime, we got a die grinder kit, a mini clean wheel kit. So that has the fine and rough wheels and the die grinder here is what we're gonna be using. Cameron also has these things for a Dremel kit. So we got our flap wheels, we got our rough wheel, we have our fine wheel. To be honest, I'm a big believer in just the fine and rough wheels to do a lot of the work, guys. I've used the flap wheels before and flap wheels can work great for certain situations, but I always seem to come back to the fine and rough wheels. I've got a video on my channel explaining what wheels work best in some situation. I'll link that in my description below. But for this one, we're just mainly gonna be using the fine and rough wheels. And finally, guys, when you're using these prime wheels and wire wheels, do not mess with your health, your eye health, and your lung and overall health in general. Use a respirator so you're not breathing in the little fine particles that come off of these wheels when you're doing it, dust, whatever. And also, these wire wheels have a tendency to fly off the little pieces of wire, so use some safety glasses, keep your eyes safe. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of the difference between the rough wheel and the wire wheel first. How about we throw a fresh one on it too? Not a beat up one. So let's check out the difference between the rough wheel prime pad and the wire wheel here. You can see what I'm talking about, how the rough prime wheel kind of leaves more of a shinier look to the pipe, whereas that brass wire wheel really gets down to that raw metal and makes and gives it more of a raw look. So it really just depends on what type of look you're going for. If you're looking for more of a duller, kind of rougher, raw look, then the brass wire wheel is gonna be your friend. Or if you want more of a shinier works pipe, then the rough prime wheel is going to work. I'm gonna do a little bit of experimenting later on in the video after I finish this pipe up with the wire wheel, hit it with the fine wheel and see how that compares and how I like that finish.
Well, I was working down the pipe. I actually forgot that we had the JB weld on here in this little crack, but the wire wheel seemed to work great on taking the JB weld off the exterior of the pipe and leaving it in the crack. So from what I can tell, the JB weld is rock hard in there and the crack is filled and is not gonna be an issue. So super pumped with that. Then guys, as you move along down the pipe, as you start to get into the curve, you can see here that the bigger wheels on the bench buffer aren't able to get into those tighter spots. So not to worry here, you simply just grab that Dremel and or die grinder with the wire wheels and or prime wheels on it and then you're able to get in those tighter spots without a problem where those bigger wheels can't reach as I'm working my way down this works pipe here it doesn't seem like the brass wheel is really getting the corrosion off around the curve here it's just not cleaning it like I would, would want to you can see how it's just still a little bit dingy compared to what we got going on here where it was a little bit more less corroded up top. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw in this 80 grit flap wheel here from Prime, swap out this brass wheel, throw the flap wheel on if I can get it on there and then see how this works to kind of get that metal to shine up just a little bit more. I mean, not shine, but it's just looking too dingy still. So definitely looking better there. Not 100% perfect, but way better with that 80 grit flap wheel. And that is what we got the 80 grit flap wheel for the die grinder for. So as you come to the end and really finish off the pipe, you wanna make sure you go the length of the section of the pipe like you see me doing here. You don't wanna do short back and forth in between. Then you're just gonna leave buffing marks on the pipe. So if you wanna leave no buffing marks in a really smooth finish, make sure you go the length of each of the sections here like you see me doing. Then to really make sure everything is even and finish off, take a fine prime wheel here. It'll give it some nice brush lines. It'll make sure everything is nice and even. And that is the look that I I like so with this stuff it's just all about experimenting and figuring out which look you like best so that was the process for the works pipe now we've got this platinum pipe here for the yz250 guys that we're going to finish up and the process is pretty much the same way except you're using different wheels so what we're going to do is throw on the fine prime mx wheel to basically clean up the nickel plated on here the fine wheel here is not going to wear through the plating which is awesome and we got some rust spots here on the back of the pipe that that fine wheel will, will take out great all right guys you can see that little section that i did there just brought that shininess back compared to how it looks on the right side so fine wheels are going to be your best friend with a platinum pipe let's give it a shot on this rustier spot now those fine wheels took the rust off so good, left that platinum plate in, you can tell the difference right there. So like I said, these fine wheels are gonna be your best friend on the platinum pipe. Let's get this finished up. Definitely happy with the way that turned out because that just made that platinum pipe pop that much more. So happy with that little polish job and buff. So the last pipe I want to talk about guys is this platinum pro circuit pipe for the 98 KX250. Obviously it's got the nickel plating since it's a platinum pipe, but it looks like they're, this pipe is in pretty rough shape. It looks like the nickel plating in plenty of spots, especially down here at the bottom, kind of here at the top. Um, the nickel plating has just worn through and we're just down to the raw steel. So you can remove the nickel plating from these pipes. You can take it to a local shop professionally. They'll do it for you. But since this pipe is in pretty rough shape, like you see this one here, I'm gonna give it a shot, give it a go with some rough prime wheels and probably that wire wheel to work through the platinum plating. It is gonna take a little bit of work to do. I've never actually done this. So this video is the first time that we're gonna give it a shot here for you guys today. It looks like around the curve here too, there's some pretty serious uh, pitting from the rusting that's going on. So I need to figure out how to get that cleaned up and looking smooth and fresh again because once we get the rust off, there's going to be no rust on it, but we're still going to have some pitting in the metal, which isn't going to look too good. So we're going to have to figure out how to clean that up as well.
I've got two of the coarse prime pads set up on the buffer here and I'm going to start just for the sake of the video. I'm going to tackle one of the spots that already has the nickel plating coming off of it already, especially in this rust spot. And then I'm going to work into the nickel plating. And then what I'll do is transfer to a spot like up here where it's just pure nickel and see how well these uh, rough coarse pads get through the plating. Honestly, I don't know guys. So you can see here where there was no nickel plating. It was all off and just rusty, but you can kind of see here where I tried to work the buffer into the nickel plating and it just doesn't seem, it, it just looks like it shined the nickel plating up and didn't really remove it. Um, I guess I can, so you can kind of see it better here, this spot. Um, it just doesn't seem like it removed any of the nickel plating because you can just tell there's a good line right here where you can tell the nickel plating is right here and then the raw steel is right here and I tried to just work that spot a while for a while it was pretty good pressure and it just wasn't coming off so I mean, I guess I can see if I can get a torch to that and see if that changes color because the, the torch won't go through the nickel plating. So, but I don't know, there's just again, here's a spot where I didn't touch where it just looks like raw steel and the nickel plating is still in this region. So I don't know if those rough, the coarse prime pads actually remove the nickel. Let me try this spot right here where it just seems to be all nickel, not this spot, but this spot here and see if I can work through that nickel plating. Here's the spot where I spent, you guys just saw me spend a good amount of time right here. Um, it does look a little bit better than the other spot, but it just looks like I cleaned up the platinum. So I guess the true test will be, see if I can get a torch on there and put a torch mark into that weld spot. So let's give it a shot. clearly able to get a torch line on the spot where I use the coarse pad, but I don't know, I'm still a little bit skeptical. So let me see if I can continue torching this ring because I haven't touched this with the coarse pad yet. So let me see if I can torch this ring and this little spot here and see if I can get it to blue up or not. I did have to spend a lot more time on this spot than I normally would. So that's why I'm a little bit more confused. I was about to give up. You guys saw it kind of goldening up a little bit and then it finally went blue. So let's give this another shot here. I guess that would make sense that the platinum doesn't blew up because when I was taking out the dents, the platinum wasn't blowing up when I got the metal red hot. So I guess you do just need a little bit of coarse pad on the platinum coating here and it allows it to blue right up. So I'm glad I did that test. Okay, so I finished up what I could getting the top section of the pipe here. Looks really good. Obviously it's not done, but man, just it looks so good underneath and up top. But when you get down below here where there's some serious pitting from all the rusting, like this is some serious rust here, looks disgusting. So you can't have a pipe with this nasty rust. I tried using both the green flap wheel and the coarse pads on this section here. And you just can't have something that looks like this combined with something that looks like that. So we're gonna have to test out a couple things here to see if we can remove this nasty pitting and rusting. So with the RM250 pipe that I also have, it's in pretty rough shape, really similar to this Pro Circuit Platinum pipe here, especially around the curve. I cleaned up the black paint on it, but as you got around to the curve, similar to the uh, Pro Circuit Platinum pipe that we have here, it may be even more rusty than the Platinum pipe. So I broke out the die grinder and I went to the hardware store, got some of these stone grinding wheels and I pretty much threw the die grinder out of the window because I maybe got about 30 seconds of grinding before I just lost all air pressure and I wasn't too happy with the way the grinding stones were working on it. So my next option here is a Dremel. And then I went on Amazon and bought these sandpaper wheels. We've got 80 grit, 120, 150, 240, 320, 400, and 600. So with the Dremel here, it's gonna have consistent power and I'm hoping that the sanding wheels are going to remove and get down to the raw metal on these 
this pipe, so let's give it a shot now. I'm done messing around. I cracked open the 80 grit to get right to it. We've got small, medium, and large in this kit, it looks like. And it comes with the little rubber pieces that you put on to the Dremel. So I'm just gonna slide that on and uh, get to work. Also with this kit here, the stem that goes into the Dremel, you need to switch out the coupler that comes with it because the stem is slimmer than the one that comes on the Dremel, but that is not a big deal. I initially slid it in, I'm like, wait a second, this Dremel is not tightening down and I started to freak out, but that's just the case. And you switch out the coupler. Overall consensus, sanding with the Dremel there, it definitely worked to take the rust off. The problem is where it didn't work is that the metal itself has actually pitted so bad. So especially in this spot right here, it's the metal's not smooth. It's actually cratery and bumpy. And then especially here around the inside of the curve, it's just really bad, that pitting. And the, those sanding bands just really did not make a dent in that. It almost looks like this 99 works pipe that I've got going on here. The, the pitting's pretty bad here. Um, it's not really too bad in other spots. At least this spot here, the metal is smooth, but it's just stained a little bit where I need something to sand a little bit stronger to get the metal shiny and clean like that. And coming back over to the OEM RM250 pipe here that I was talking about, I'm not even gonna try those sanding bands on this because you can just see, I mean, that is rough. That's really, really bad rust. I think the next move is trying to grab an angle grinder to smooth out and take that rust completely out. You can see it, man, it's so bad right there. But before tackling these pipes with an angle grinder, I always just seem to go back to the rough wheels by Prime MX, and that's what I did with the rest of the Suzuki pipe here. You can see how the metal is still really pitted, but the rough wheels actually did a great job shredding all the rest of the rust on this pipe here. I did use a combination of the buffing wheel right here, and then the Dremel that you see, but man, it did such a good job at tearing off the rust that I don't think I would actually go back and use those sanding bands that I bought off of Amazon. If you guys wanna try them, go, go right ahead. But the trusty, rough, coarse prime wheels just work super well. Also, just having the right tools works. So this Dremel has been a lifesaver. My compressor was way too small to push that die grinder. If you have a huge compressor that compressor that can push a die grinder, then go ahead, great. But the Dremel here, consistent electrical power, and I had the thing all the way up to 10, and I could just go and grind and not have to worry about the grinder losing pressure. So having the right tools makes a huge difference. If you don't have a Dremel and you're doing this, the prime wheels do have an attachment that go into the Dremel. So that is my recommendation, and it seems that I always go back to Prime MX rough cleaning wheels. And then also to get the tighter spots like underneath the brackets as well as the spring brackets. I've got these wire cups here that go on the Dremel and these work awesome. They're small enough to get in those spots and clean up those rust where the prime pads cannot get to. So these work great too. I'll link them in my description below as well. And you're definitely gonna wanna wear eye protection with these because the little wire strands do fly off and will get in your clothes and everywhere. So just make sure you've got some eye protection on because you don't want one of those things going in your eyes. But we're gonna try to get some of this metal pitting out here and this platinum pipe up next. So what I did was went ahead and bought this tungsten carbide burr set off of Amazon. And um, I was looking this up and it looks like they use this for porting cylinders and a bunch of other things like cleaning up metal burrs. So I'm gonna go to shot here, work it lightly on this pipe and see how it works. So here's the deal guys, I took those tungsten carbide tips and just tested a small spot here on the platinum pipe to get that pitting out. And it just seemed to leave the pipe pretty rough looking. So I ended up grabbing this oscillating tool from Walmart and threw some 80 grit sandpaper on it, 100 grit and then 120 grit, sanded it right down. And then I threw it back on the bench buffer as well. And it seems to have worked out okay. So this is the spot that we're talking about here. Um, you can see how up top 
there's still a bunch of pitting there. And if we come back to the spot that I was working on here, you can see how it definitely got smoothed out a little bit compared to, compared to the pitting right here. So the process, I mean, wasn't too bad, but it's gonna take quite some time I feel to do the rest of this pitting. So I'm gonna complete the process here and give it a shot and keep you guys posted on how it goes. All right, so here are the results of using those tungsten carbide tips along with the oscillating tool with the sandpaper here. And I don't know, like I'm not completely thrilled with the outcome. Let me try to zoom up a little bit. Like it is super smooth, but it is not a smooth looking finish like you do have up there with your standard platinum pipe. So let me flip it around. Here's the other side of it. I mean, the pitting is gone, but it's just not as smooth looking as I would like it to be. And it was still really hard to get around that neck area. You can see still a little bit of pitting in there. Along with the oscillating tool, I ended up taking the Dremel with the sandpaper bits on there to try to clean this up a little bit. And it definitely helped and worked a little bit. I'm just not completely thrilled on the job that it did. It looks way better, don't get me wrong, but um, man, this was, these pipes are just way more work than I thought it was gonna be. And I mean, if you kind of take a step back and check it out, it doesn't look half bad. So I ended up getting an angle grinder to see if that would help. I didn't even film because I just want to test a little spot. And you can see here how it just scuffed this pipe up way too much. And then I tried it on a little spot here on the RM250 OEM pipe and I am just not liking it. It's just way too rough for these pipes here. So man, I, I just don't know what else to do to get those uh, pipes looking better and kind of smooth out that metal. Um, if you guys have any ideas, shoot them below. But um, it's been a grind and a journey to figure out what to do with these pipes. But for now, I mean, the thing looks still way better than it did before. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead on the OEM RM250 pipe here and go ahead and use those tungsten carbide bits as well as the oscillating sanding tool to see if I can um, clean that up way more and make it look uh, more of a works pipe and then uh, finish these things off. All right guys, here's the final product of stripping that RM250 rust off here. So I'm actually really pumped with the way this turned out. Those tungsten carbide tips um, just took a lot of work. Starting from that really rusty pipe, I just didn't think that I was gonna be able to get it completely stripped of that rust and, and looking good. When I started using the carbide tips on the Dremel, I was just really nervous that it wasn't gonna come out the way I wanted to. But after I finished up with the, those tips, what I ended up doing was going to the Dremel using the 80 grit, 150 grit, 240 grit, and then three, yeah, the 320 grit sanding wheels. And man, it just really shaped up nicely. Took the Dremel again with the rough Prime MX pad to really clean it up and then finish it off with the tiny little wire brushes for the tight spots and then finally just threw it on the bench buffer to really make it come out and shine. So man, I'm, I'm actually really, really happy with the way this turned out because this thing did not look like it was going to be salvageable at the beginning of the video. All right guys, moving on from getting the pipes all freshened up, I think it's time for the final step which is taking the torch here and bluing all the welds and making making the welds look, making this pipe look factory if you're working with a raw pipe. You see me finish off the platinum, you're not gonna be able to use the torch on the platinum pipe. The heat is not gonna go through the nickel plating, you're not gonna get those blue welds, so you're only gonna be able to get them with these raw pipes. Now the idea is to follow all of the weld lines around the pipes here, kind of up and around the curve, the loop, everything, and the key to torching the blue coloring into the pipe is not staying in one spot too long. Because if you do stay in one spot too long, it happens so quick, just as you think, 
you're, you're do, just as you think you're doing a good job and you're like, oh, I got the real color really coming in. If you hang on that spot just a split second too much, the color is gonna bubble out and it's gonna look like crap and you're gonna and it's gonna look like a whoop section or waves going down the weld line here. So it takes some practice to do this. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of examples. The thing is if you do mess up guys and the color kind of bubbles out the way you don't want it to, just throw it right back on the buffer, clean up that coloring, it's gonna go right back to this raw look and then you can take the torch and go right back over it and do it again. So that's the cool part about putting the bluing lines in the uh, weld marks. So let's go make it happen. So you'll notice as the color starts to come in, I'm moving the torch in and out, shutting the torch on and off. But the more you do it, the more you get a feel for it. I think the best way to try to describe it is you always kind of want to stay ahead of the color. So All right guys, so before the video drags on way too long, I went ahead and finished up bluing all the rest of the works pipes that I have here. The OEM Suzuki one, I think this is the 05 Kawasaki, the 98 Kawasaki, and then the 05 Plus RM250. And then just seeing them all together just makes it that much more worth it. So also for kicks and giggles, I tried taking that 98 Kawasaki Pro Circuit Platinum pipe that I had, and I tried bluing a little bit of the welds there some more just to see how that would work out. And you see here, as I tried to do it, it obviously started bluing the raw metal, but not the spots where the platinum was so I scrapped that idea real quick I'm just gonna keep that a platinum pipe so I threw it back on the bench buffer and cleaned out those bluing marks but if you have one of these pro circuit works pipes what we have to do next if you notice if you buy one brand new the pro circuit lettering on the badges comes blacked out and painted um, so that's what we're gonna do now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to paint these ones but if you guys want a super cheap and easy quick way to do it grab a fine point sharpie and just color in the lines like you're five years old. Doesn't last too long, but the painted way is also pretty easy. What you do is you pretty much just mask off the badge like you would if you were painting anything. Go grab some high heat black spray paint like you'd use on a grill or something. You can go gloss, you can go flat. I don't really know which one I like better, but for this one, for these ones, I've got the flat paint. Then you just throw a nice coat of paint on the badge, wait till it dries, and then you take one of these square sanding blocks. And then what you do is just lightly sand the raised part of the badge, making sure not to sand the divots where the letters are and you'll have a brand new looking badge which is pretty cool all right it is time to wrap this thing up six pipes I took a pretty big bite guys and um, this was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be but throughout the whole process I hope that you were able to find some value in whatever the process was maybe it was getting the dents out maybe it was getting the surface rust off using the prime pads maybe it was using the Drebel and the tungsten carbide tips to get the pitted rust and metal off so I went through a lot I know it was a lot, but if you have a pipe of your own, I hope that one of the methods that I use today works for you. But I'm here to make the suggestions to you guys. You guys are ultimately the ones that make the decision on what you actually want to do based on your certain situation. Not everybody's situation is gonna be the same refurbing their pipe, so take that into account. And a lot of it, guys, like I tried with these, it's a lot of trial and error. Um, you figure out what works, what doesn't work for you. Like for example, I really love the finish of the rough prime wheels. Some might like the finish of the fine prime wheels because it's a little bit shinier. So again, it's kind of just what you like. And as you see guys, 
It's really hard to get these pipes looking 100% fresh and brand new, especially if you got a ton of dents like this 99 Kawasaki pipe. This one was a struggle. I knew it was gonna be a beast. I knew it was gonna be my hardest one and it still came out looking pretty dang good. And all these pipes, they're gonna look great on the bike compared to the condition that I got them in. But if you're watching this video and you do have experience refurbing pipes like we went through today, and you, maybe you have a different process that could help me and or other people that are watching this video, leave a comment below on what you do and what you think works best for you. Because the point is to help each other out and make sure all our bikes are looking fresh when we roll up to the tracker trail. If you guys do need any of the tools that I use today, bench buffer, prime pads, the tungsten carbide tips if your pipe is really bad, I'm gonna link all those in my description below, as well as the face mask guys when you're working on these things, especially using the prime pads like I said earlier. It is essential to protect yourself, protect your health, use that face mask. But again, I make suggestions, you guys make decisions. I genuinely hope that you guys enjoyed the journey that we took to get these pipes referred today. Go ahead and like the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're looking for more two-stroke stuff like this, like bike builds, how-tos, as well as product reviews. But along with thank you guys for watching, I also wanna thank you guys for using my Rocky Mountain ATV MC link in my description below. When you guys do click on that, you know we need parts, you know we need oil, etc. When you guys click and purchase parts through that link, it supports me directly. So as always, I appreciate you guys doing that, but we're going to wrap this up. As always, ride hard, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace!